It's Duffy's Tavern, brought to you transcribed by the National Broadcasting Company, with Charlie Cantor as Finnegan, Hazel Sherman as Miss Duffy, Pats be shown at the piano and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. When Irish eyes are smiling, sure it's like the morning spring. And the Hello, Duffy Stavern, where the elite meets the Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. I guess you heard the good news about Rhinelander McGurk, huh? Yep, born a poor boy in humble surroundings, came up the hard way, nobody to give him a helping hand, and yet he winds up being electrocuted in one of the top prisons of the country. <laughs> yeah, it just shows that we're living in a true democracy, Duffy. <clears throat> Was his family proud? Well, uh, strangely enough, uh, some of them was uh, rather shocked. Yeah. Three of them were sitting right alongside of him. <laughs> it was the first time in history, instead of using an electric chair, the prison had to use a sofa. <laughs> huh? Well, I'm busy cleaning up the joint, you know. It was quite a mess after the going away party that we had for McGurk. Well, no, uh, McGurk himself wasn't here. Uh, we just drank to him, you know, in absentia. Yeah. Yeah, we just kept drinking toasts and till the lights dimmed twice. And... <laughs> then everybody cheered and went home. <clears throat> well, look, I gotta hang up now, Duffy. As I say, I'm working hard getting the place cleaned up. Oh, yes, I'm working very hard. Okay, Fats, you shuffle and I'll deal. <laughs> Excuse me. What? What, Duffy? What do you mean I never do no work around here? I love your audacity. Who cleans out the joint? Who cooks the food? Who waits on the customers? Who does all the dirty work? I know, but who tells Fats to do it? <laughs> huh? Ah, go soak your head. Ah, that Duffy. I worked me fingers to the grindstone. What do I get? Nothing but retribution. I'm sick of it. Work, 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 work. Okay, Fats, I got two pair. <laughs> Three of a kind. You win. Work, work, work. Why do I work so hard? Look at me. I'm down to a skeleton. Look at how my chest has shrank. It ain't shrank. It's just gone to pot. <laughs> Look, it just happens that I'm wearing a fat apron. Mr. Archie, if people lost wake waking, yeah, you'd look like Man Mountain Dean. <laughs> Just a minute. Are you inferring that I ain't laborious? I'm only saying you spent so much time watching the clock that when we went off daylight savings, you had to set your eyes back one hour. <laughs> Well, I'll prove to you that I lost weight on this job. Here, I'll show you on the weighing machine. Hey, wait a minute, Fats. Look on the back of this card. It's got me fortune. It says, today will be your lucky day. Mr. Archie, you ain't gonna believe that little card. Oh, no? See? Me luck has started already. Look, I got me penny back. What's so lucky about that? I put in a slug. <laughs> Yes, sir, Fats, there's a, a time in the affairs of the tide of men when the flood of the gate leads on to fortune. And, oh, excuse me, probably the Irish sweepstake calling. <clears throat> Just hope I don't get nervous in the newsreels. <laughs> the Irish, huh? Hello, Faith and Begara. Huh? Who's this? Oh. Who is it? Chin Lee. <laughs> You know, from the laundry. Uh, <clears throat> tell me, uh, what can I do for you, C.L.? <laughs> what? Well, that's swell. Okay, uh, well, I'll, I'll be seeing you, Flaith and Bligglala. <laughs> More good luck? Yep, it's uncanny, Fats. The laundry lost me shirt. <laughs> that is good luck. Yeah. Yeah, so instead of a shirt, Chin Lee's gonna give me 25 cents in cash. 
25 cents for a shirt? I told him I bought it new. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, that fortune-telling card was right. Ain't it a funny thing the way some days is lucky and other days is jinxes? Like the time that Tim Hannigan walked under that ladder. Bad luck? Bad. That's the day that Tim Hannigan walked under that ladder. He was young, healthy, strong, full of life. And then? Three days later, they found him married. <laughs> and look at Rhinelander McGurk. <clears throat> you mean the guy that was electrocuted? Yeah, even he had a touch of bad luck. Uh, oh, all right. Oh, hello, Finney, and how are you? Oh, I'm busy working, Arthur. Busy working? Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, I got a job for the holidays running the elevator at Messy. Well, you're running the elevator, and how come you're here? I've been grounded. <laughs> yeah. Too bad. What happened? Your, your brain leak at high altitudes? And... Oh, no, dear. It's all because of a slight misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, huh? Yeah, you see, dear, I thought Macy's had two basements. <laughs> but they haven't. They have now. <laughs> You mean... I drove that elevator 20 feet below the ground. Well, after you did that, then what did you do? Oh, don't worry. I, I kept me with you, Bobby. You did, huh? Oh, yeah. I nonchalantly opened the door, turned to the passengers, and I said, Step up, please. <laughs> Real quick thinking, Finnegan. Tell me, how did you get this job with me? How did I get it? Uh, I had experience. You remember Chicago at the stockyards? I used to run that outdoor elevator. Oh, and the experience helped you at Macy's, huh? No, it's in fact, it hurt me. It got me into trouble. How? Well, in the stockyards, I got in the habit of slapping them in the rear to make them get out there. <laughs> And you did the same thing at Macy's? Yeah, yeah. Except that I was politer. You was politer, huh? Yeah. At Macy's, you wear gloves. <laughs> how diplomatic. Well, how do you... Do you like the job, all right? Oh, it's all right. Except that some people are so impossible. They're, they're always complaining. Like yesterday... The same started complaining that she couldn't breathe in the elevator. Why couldn't she breathe? I had a nose caught in the door. <laughs> well, didn't she tell you that her nose was caught in the door? Yeah, but I thought she always talked that way. <laughs> thought it might be Rudy Valley's mother. <laughs> oh, what people you have to put up with. <laughs> oh, it's what well, today another dame comes in and she says, Operator, I'd like to change this skirt. So I says, Not in my elevator, you don't. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad you got a job, Finnegan. And by the way, today is my lucky day, too, you know. Your lucky day? How do you know? Well, I, this little card from the weighing machine, it's a lucky omen. Oh, you believe in them lucky omens? Well, certainly, don't you? No, I don't. Do you take my uncle, for instance. He's got two rabbit's feet, and they brought him nothing but trouble. Two rabbit's feet, and they brought him trouble? Why? Well, he can't find a pair of shoes that'll fit him. <laughs> Finnegan, tell me, why don't you go and find a mind reader and bet him that he can't? <laughs> oh, that's a good suggestion, Arch. It appeals to my sporting blood. Good. Well, I'll be seeing you. Uh, hey, hey, Miss Duffy, what's the matter with you? What are you, what are you looking so excited about? Oh, didn't you hear what just happened in our house? What? Papa was shaving and the razor slipped. This is me lucky day. <laughs> you were shaving, huh? Tell me, how's he getting along? Oh, fine, but Mama's feeling awful weak. How come your mother's feeling weak? 
Well, who do you think he was shaving? <laughs> Well, maybe I ain't so lucky after all. <clears throat> what do you mean? Well, one of them weighing machine cars, you know, says that today is going to be my lucky day. Oh, those weighing machine cars. I got on a scale the other day, and you know what the card said? In your case, it probably says, deposit another penny, please. Your 200 pounds is up. <laughs> Archie, I don't weigh 200 pounds, and for your information, I have weighed as little as 110 but you was four years old at the time. <laughs> and what else did the card say? Uh, any predictions? Yeah, it said, prepare for romance. Ere the night is over, your lips will be burning. What happened? Somebody set fire to your mustache? <laughs> That's why I don't believe in those cards. Before the night was over, Rodney Haybinder had proposed... Well? ...to the girl next door. <laughs> well, at least you was close. <clears throat> I should have suspected it those nights when the three of us were sitting in the hammock. Why? His feet were always in my lap. <laughs> I thought... You know, I, I thought I should take what I could get. Yeah, I see. Uh, well, Mr. Archie... Yeah, Fats? Special delivery letter for you. Let me have it. Hey, it's from Sing Sing. It's from Rhinelander McGee. How do you know? Part of the envelope is singed. <laughs> Probably wrote it on his death seat. Let us take a look at it. Hey, hey, Fats. It's his will. It says, to whom it may concern, crime don't pay. I hereby leave six million dollars to me old buddies in the New York Police Department. <laughs> And to me old pal Archie, I bequeath one half interest in me racehorse, Stumblebum. Did you hear that, Miss Duffy? I inherited a half a racehorse. I told you this was me lucky day. Oh, what else does the letter say? Well, let me see. P.S. In case I break out of this place, you'll be seeing me in person. Signed, Rhinelander McGirt. P.P.S. He didn't. <laughs> You won't. <laughs> Signed, the warden. <laughs> Boy, that weighing machine was right. Look at me, the, the bona fide owner of a half of a racehorse. <laughs> hey, Fats, quick, uh, get me some sugar cubes and a bale of hay. Why? What do you mean, why? Maybe you haven't got the half that eats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's... Oh, no, Rhinelander wouldn't do that to me, his old pal. He... He knows how I always like to look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> well, gang, this calls for a real celebration. It's me lucky day. Miss Duffy, get out the champagne. Fat some music, please, while everybody drinks a toast to Archie. The half horse racetrack tycoon. <laughs> I'm afraid to love you, afraid I might like it. I'm afraid to hold you, afraid I might like it. When your lips invite me to steal a kiss or two, I'm tempted, but I never follow through. I'm afraid you'll thrill me, thrill me, then leave me. What's another heart or two to you? I just like a stranger, it's because I sense the danger. I'm afraid to love you, I'm afraid I do. Another heart. 
lot of tea. Why, just like a stranger, it's because I sense the danger. I'm afraid to love you. I'm afraid I do. half of that horse. The other half? Yeah, that's right. I never thought of that. I wonder who does own the other half. Well, whoever he is, I just hope he keeps up his end. <laughs> no, it costs a lot of money to keep up a horse. I wonder who it could be. Well, I don't know who the guy is, but when we put the horse on a big race, I hope that his half won't be dragging. <laughs> Mr. Archie, Hmm? Do you know anything about horse racing? Are you kidding? Fats, I was born with the smell of a saddle. <laughs> <laughs> and horse flesh in my veins. I, you know, I learned to ride when I was a kid only five years old. And in fact, the rest of the kids in the neighborhood used to call me Archie the Jock. How do you spell that? <laughs> What do you mean, how do you spell it? They spell it J-O-K-E-Y, jockey. <laughs> yes, sir. Day after day, I used to race my own little pony. Hour after hour, I'd sit in a saddle till me little pants was worn thin. <laughs> Did you ever win? Well, not every time, but I always managed to show. <laughs> <laughs> but what am I doing wasting my words here? I better get me stable organized. Uh, Finnegan. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you a lover of horse flesh? Well, frankly, Arch, I prefer salami. <laughs> Finnegan, I'm talking about racehorses. Oh, oh, the racehorses. Yeah. You know, Arch, I own one once. How did you ever own a racehorse? Well, it was a funny thing. I was out at the racetrack one day, duh, so this horse leans over the fence and he says, duh, Hey, Finnegan, how'd you like to buy a good horse cheap? Just a minute, you mean a horse leaned over the fence and talked to you? What's so strange about that? It was a very low fence. <laughs> oh. Boy, but you know, he, he sure was a fast horse. Fast horse, huh? <clears throat> was you the jockey? No, the jockey was my sister. Your sister? Yeah. Where did your sister ever learn to ride a horse? Oh, gee, you, you know that uh, I race track down in Florida? The race in Florida? Uh, uh, Widener Handicap? Archie, it widened her all over. <laughs> now, stop bothering with these nonsensicals, Finnegan. I'm trying to get this stable of mine organized. Now, uh, let me see here... Where can I find a groom? Believe me, it ain't easy. <laughs> I believe you. <clears throat> but I happen to be talking about a groom for me racehorse. Oh. Uh, by the way, Archie, you know, after the race, they always have a pretty girl standing in the winner's circle. Mm-hmm. So? Well, uh, maybe if your horse wins, I could stand next to him. Yeah, but how would the judges know which neck to hang the wreath on? <laughs> uh, Finnegan, where's Archie? There is in the back room looking at the racing form. Oh. Say, there, is it true that Archie owns one half of his horse? Yeah. And some other guy owns the other half? Well, that's right. Well, what part does the horse own? I guess no part. This sort of thing couldn't happen if Abraham Lincoln was alive. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Oh, it's you, Papa. Where's Lame Brain? He's in the back room looking at the racing form. What, Papa? Oh, well, that's nice. You're sending over 300 pounds of beef? All right. We'll put it in the icebox. Finnegan, fast. Yeah. 
Uh, Papa's sending over 300 pounds of beef for a party in the memory of his dear friend, Rhinelander McGurk. Uh, when it gets here, put it right in the icebox, will you? Gee, that's nice of Mr. Duffy. 300 pounds of beef. By the way... What? You sure he ain't sending over your mother? <gasps> that's for your information. Mama only weighs 298. She lost 15 pounds last summer up in Saratoga. <laughs> Uh, okay, Miss Duffy. We'll put the side of beef in the icebox, eh? Huh? Now, let me look at this racing <laughs> Wait till Archie finds out about this. Uh, shall we bring it through the back door or the front door? Huh? Well, what do you know? They're surprising me. They're bringing me little horse to the tavern. <laughs> but suppose it's too big to get through the door. Well, there's only one thing to do. What? We can slice one piece off of one side. <laughs> These butchers. Slicing a piece off my poor little horse. I better idea. What's that? Why don't we saw it right down the middle? <laughs> the fiends. No, no. The, I think we should leave it in one piece. At least Finnegan loves horses. And then barbecue it. <laughs> Lousy cannibal. I just hope it won't be too tough. What are they talking tough? He's a sweet little animal. I know it. Well, if it's too tough, I suppose we can club it for a few hours. I'll report this to the CPA. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I disagree with the whole procedure. I don't think it should be clubbed at all. Nice going, Finnegan. I think we should cut it up into little pieces and make hamburgers. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Finnegan. I've been listening to this conversation. It's gone far enough. What a lousy way to treat a poor little horse. A horse? Yeah. We were talking about a side of beef. Oh. Papa's sending it down here because he's given a party in memorial of Rhineland and McGurk. Oh, oh, well, that's different. And I'm sure McGurk will appreciate it, you know. He's a great lover of roast beef. Now, uh, <clears throat> let me finish reading this racing form. Hey, wait a minute. Holy cat, this is me lucky day. What do you mean? Me horse, Stumblebum. He's running today. <laughs> where, where? Down south. You know, the wealthier horses always go south for the winter. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Say, say, look, Arch, he must be a great horse. Why? The odds are a hundred to one. <laughs> now, that, that's an old trick, you know. They jack up the price to make the other horses overconfident. <laughs> oh, I see. Hey, who's he running against, George? Well, let's see here. Third race, Harry Boy. Slow starter, but can win. Susie Q, startled the clock as at Pimlico. Great in the stretch. Whirlwind, never looked in better shape. One last six starts. Knockout drop, cinch to win on dry track. And stumble bum. What's it say about him? Good to his mother. <laughs> I thought this was your lucky day. It still is. Finnegan, here's two bucks. I want you to go down to Lefty's pool room and put it on me horse. Ah, uh, what would a horse be doing in a pool room? <laughs> horse ain't in the pool room. The bookie's in the pool room. Now get going. Uh, but I... Come on, get in your stirrup. I, I just want to see if I got it straight. Okay. Uh, I go down to lefties and shoot a game of pool with a horse named Get in Your Stirrup. No, no, Finnegan. Bet two bucks on a horse called Stumblebum. Oh, that horse that you own half of. Yeah, put two bucks on his nose. Suppose you own the other half. <laughs> okay, put two bucks on that, too. <clears throat> Maybe he'll back in. <laughs> this is my lucky Hi, day. Hi, Arch. Oh, you back, Finnegan? Yeah, it's a Arch. Are you sure you got a horse? Of course, why? Guys down the bookie joint say you got a dog. <laughs> Well, maybe it's on account of he's been scratched so often they think he's got fleas. <laughs> uh, did you put down the bet? Just like you told me. Is he still 100 to 1? Oh, better than that, Arch. Better than that? Yeah, he's 200 to 1. <laughs> Four bucks at 200 to 1, that's almost $298. <laughs> hey, this is me, Lucky Day. Fats, turn on the radio quick. I want to hear the results. Okay, Lucky. And here are the horses coming out of the paddock for the third race. World of is leading the field with...
Thumbabum second. Atta boy, Stumblebum, stay in there. Archie. Come on. Pass that whirlwind. Archie. Come on, Stumblebum. Archie. What? The race hasn't started yet. Oh. <laughs> Just a minute, folks. There seems to be some delay. Two officials are coming out on the track with a large bale of hay with 25 candles on it. They're taking it over to Stumblebum. <laughs> yes, folks, it's Stumblebum's 25th birthday. <laughs> well, you know, it's my horse's birthday. Mazel tov. <laughs> Thank you. To say the least, folks, this Stumblebum is no man of war. Ain't that wonderful? He's comparing him to the greatest horse that ever lived. And now the horses are lined up at the starting gate. And just a minute. Stumblebum seems to be down on one knee. Probably going to start from a crouching position. <laughs> it's all right, folks. He's up out. And there they go. Out in front, it's final win by two legs. Susie Q is second by a length and a half. Followed by Harry Boy. Breeze quick and speed king. Where's Stumblebum? Stumblebum is now leaving the post. What? Well, what do you know? Stumblebum is now running away from the field. Out of voice, Stumblebum. Only he's running in the wrong direction. <laughs> Maybe Stumblebum is a mutter. Does he have to pick a time like this? Huh? <laughs> Coming out of the quarter turn, it's whirlwind by a length. Where he's quick and speed king. Whirlwind, Stumblebum, Stumblebum is on the rail. On a rail? Get back on the track. <laughs> Stumblebum. Come on, Stumblebum. Come on, Stumblebum. Come on, Stumblebum. Come on, Whirlwind. Finnegan, what's the idea? I just wanted to break the monotony. Of it. It's Stumblebum out in front, folks. Come on, Stumblebum. Make it a real lucky day for me. This Stumblebum is sensational. The way he's running, you think he was a horse. <laughs> His two owners must be mighty proud of him today. And now as they near the finish line, it's Stumblebum by one length. Stumblebum by two lengths, three lengths, and now flash! Stumblebum will hit the headlines in every paper in the country. What happened? He just dropped dead. <laughs> what? The winner is Whirlwind! Holy cat! I lost the race, I lost my horse. I guess this just takes me lucky day. Yes, folks, this is a tough break for Archie, one of the two owners of Stumblebum. You're telling me. But nothing compared to the misfortunes of the other owner of Stumblebum, who bet $500 on him. That gallant sportsman and tavern owner... Who? Patrick J. Duffy. <laughs> How do you like that? Duffy lost 500 bucks. It is me lucky day after all. <laughs> Listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, transcribed by NBC. NBC.